All right, it's Friday. I'm working my butt off, milling these giant timbers all day. I am spent. Woo! Working hard, working hard. You may see me swat some mosquitoes away. <laughs> I was doing a video on the van, uh, I don't know, weeks ago, and I pulled this knife out, showed it off, and somebody wanted me to, they asked if I would do a video talking about this thing, what it really is. I have two more here. Uh, I have one of each of the three manufacturers that made these during World War II. This is from World War II. Uh, this one is a knife that I modified. We'll get into that towards the end here. So it says USMC right on it. Now a friend of mine, she brought this one over to me one day, you know, knowing I was in the Marine Corps. And we made a trade and I took this knife and I thought, man, that is so cool. U.S. Marine Corps. Well, it turns out that the USMC on here doesn't actually stand for United States Marine Corps. It stands for U.S. Medical Corps. Now, the story is, during World War II, these were issued to corpsmen. And the idea was that corpsmen, uh, this is like a great camp knife. There's, and that's what corpsmen did a lot of the time. Uh, and other Marines. They would set up these uh, areas, like triage areas, areas to work on the Marines, wounded Marines. You could take a sapling down with one shot with this thing, build litters, all that sort of stuff. Well, the Marines started stealing these from the corpsmen. <laughs> In particular, the machine gun crews, because these things are just great. Like I said, clearing fields of fire. Once that started happening, the Marine Corps eventually started issuing, issuing these two, at least the, the story I've heard, is they start issuing these knives to Marine uh, machine gun crews. You will see this original sheath. On the back of the sheath it says Boyt, U.S. Boyt 42. And uh, you'll see these. You'll, you'll see them in the packs and the pictures, on the belt. You'll see these things stuck in the ground. You just cannot miss this handle. Very distinctive. I will say it's very bulky, not super comfortable. These things were, it was a commission, uh, you know, they were made during the war. They had to crank these things out quick. And, and listen, man, this is a full quarter inch thick. And actually each one of these is a little bit different. These are all hand forged, right? These are high carbon steel. These things, you can put an edge on these things that you can shave your face with. No joke. And they are heavy. Let's give you some dimensions. This one with the handle is 16 and a half inches long. Same here. This one's probably going to be a little different because I've modified it so much. Yeah, this one here comes in at just under 16. Now, the three companies are this one here is the Village Blacksmith. This one is, it's either Bridell or Brittle, B-R-I-D-D-E-L-L. -L. I don't know if you'll be able to read that or not on the screen. And this one is, uh, it's uh, Chatillon or Chatillon. It's C-H-A-T-I-L-L-O-N, apostrophe New York. <clears throat> Hoping you can read that. Now, this one has three pins in the handle. The Bridell has two at the base here. So it's got a total of four pins. This one, I really don't remember. I probably have old pictures. There is a picture folder on my, I have a Facebook page. It's called Los Angeles Urban Survival. I did a whole picture folder on the mods when I did this. Now this, when this came to me, it had a lot of chips in it. Somebody had tried to sharpen it with a grinder. <clears throat> it was all fouled up. That's why I didn't mind modifying this particular blade. I added a finger choil here, here, here. Added some jimping here. I hit that with a file in a way that it grips if you go to try to push forward. I've got a pivot point here for a, to, as a fire starter. If you want to use the spindle. Lanyard ergonomic handle. It's got a palm swell in the center. Very comfortable. This thing chops like an axe. These things are, let's see now, this one is, you're in 
just a hair under a quarter of an inch. This one is just on the money, quarter of an inch, if not a little bit more. Remember, all hand forged. And then this one here is pretty much on the money, slightly a hair under a quarter of an inch. Now, they're reproducing this knife, made in China somewhere. I don't remember which one they are remanufacturing. I think it's the Chalion, or, or what is it? Chatalon. I think that's the one that they're reproducing. So be advised, when you measure the spine on it, it's going to be 3 16ths of an inch. It's not coming in close to a quarter of an inch thick. <clears throat> so you just have to be careful. Um, I just want to point out too, there's a lot of knives out there. If you start looking for theater used knives, daggers in particular, K-bars, the U.S. Navy uh, knife, where the handles have been modified because they were stacked leather handles and that leather would fail. And so they would get on the ship, a lot of guys on the boats, uh, there was there's machine shops on, in there and they would make all sorts of different stacked handles with like lucite and different materials. And so to me, uh, it makes sense. I don't think there's anything wrong with modifying a blade or a handle. Uh, now, people will jump all over me for messing with this knife, but it's mine. I don't intend on selling it. This I've turned this into the ultimate camp knife, survival knife. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this thing. <laughs> you know, it's pretty good. It's it's interesting too because I sharpened this up quite a bit. You know, these you know, compared to the more round nose here, you get a little thrust in there. It's, it's like a mini gladius, like a Roman gladius. And uh, I just I feel like if I was in the field and I was using one of these things all day, I probably would have modified this handle to make it more comfortable. You know, that's just me. Anyhow, this one has some chips in it, and I was going to do a tip on it like this one here and fit a cross guard on it and a handle and make it more like a buoy. If you go down the rabbit hole on these Corman knives, you'll find pictures of that online. And it's pretty badass. People have modified these during the war, after the war. It used to be you could get these blades at this one here. I mean, it's been pounded on. Somebody's pounded on a spine, batoning with it, but somebody hit this with a hammer. So this, that's why I didn't mind messing this one up, modifying it. This one here is still in perfect condition. I mean, you know, unmolested since the 1940s, and it's pretty cool. I don't know what these are going for these days. I bought them when they were somewhat affordable. From what I understand, they're hundreds of dollars a piece now. I have found a source for these out of Texas. I don't even know, man, 10, 15 years ago. They had a whole warehouse of them. I just bought the one I should have bought four or five of them. They're probably still out there. I just want to show this off. There's a guy, Justin Burke, super nice guy. Uh, black, used to do a lot of blacksmithing. Got a little bit away from it because he got a little bitter with social media. Facebook was, uh, they kind of took him down. But before that happened, I met him through Facebook and we started chatting. He's a super cool guy. And I was driving across the country five years ago. I actually got real sick on my, before I left. And on my way back, I stopped and stayed with Justin in, in the mountains of Tennessee. Sick as a dog, sleeping in my Astro van, and stayed up there for about a week. And we hand forged this knife together. Justin did the grind, the final grinding on it, but there's a lot of pictures of us working together on it. And he did his stamp on it. He added the MKZ and my butterfly on here. And this is a, I mean, this has been heat treated, tempered, the whole deal. I never finished making this knife. And it's, it's at the spine here, it's pretty thick. Yeah, we're at a quarter of an inch right here. Tapers here. I mean, this is, I, I just need to make handles for it. <laughs> Scales, I just haven't gotten around to it. I should finish this knife and get a nice leather sheath made for it or make one myself because this is, that's going to be badass. Probably the only knife I'll ever need for the rest of my life. But anyhow, just wanted to talk about these, tell you what I know. Again, U.S. Medical Corps, Bolo. There's been several different types of Bolos uh, that the military's used over the years. Uh, 
And that's just what these are. I, I still plan to modify this someday, but I don't know. I suppose if, if, if somebody wanted to throw a bunch of money at me for one of these, I might sell it, but it, it wouldn't be cheap. Because uh, I don't, obviously don't need all of these. But uh, this is what you can do with it. Again, hand-forged, high-carbon steel. It will take a crazy edge and retain it. I've done a ton of chopping with it, and this thing's still pretty sharp. So that's it. I'll show you some close-ups of it. This chipped out on me. That was my own fault, my first time doing this. It's because this steel rounded down a bit and I just lost a bond there. That's okay. Justin sees this. Thanks, man. I know you're like, what the hell, man? Why didn't you ever finish that? Dude, I have just been busy. Not as busy as you. Congratulations on the kid and the new one on the way. I really do have to finish this knife. It's ridiculous that it's not done. <laughs> 